John Bell is our first speaker. Hi, welcome. Um, they asked me to speak, and I guess uh, as you can see from my gray hair, I'm the oldest, well, probably the oldest one here. Uh, I guess I've, I've always kind of felt a certain distinction because I was born during the Korean War. I'm one of the first generation. There's some here that were came along in that decade. And so when I I was adopted, I was up on the very first plane of Holt in 1956. My sister came December of that same year. So about four years ago, I had been living in uh, Korea for about 12 years at the time. I've been there almost 16 years now teaching English. I got involved with uh, Global Overseas Adoptee Link when they started, when Amy Nasker started that back in 97, 98. I was one of the uh, beginning uh, founding members, I guess. But the thing that I uh, have looked at is the, the, over the years, the flow of people coming to Korea. And so I got involved with helping others as they came there. But for me, being Korean was like many of you have experienced it was just sort of part of my heritage. You know, everyone asked me, what are you? And so I would tell them my story. And I'm sure some of you have gone through the same experience. You look around the room and we have quite a mixture, and even some Chinese sisters and other Asians. But the thing that I have really seen the last three months I've been back here in, in the States is that, you know, we're all Americans. And a while back, I did on my blog something about the levels of Koreanness. Because in Korea, some people, the kids will tell you that if you study abroad, if you're a Korean student, and you study more than two or three years, you're no longer Korean. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a thing, Uridan, us, we. Now, most of us have a common trait that we're American and Asian or Korean, and but even amongst other groups of Koreans, those that are called Kyopos, anybody know what Kyopo is? One who's like one and a half generation or second generation born in the United States. All of these groups have different characteristics, but we all have certain overlapping characteristics. So what I have discovered, especially in the last four years where I really studied the issues of Korean adoption uh, and put that on my blog. The changing for the good attitudes of Korean people, it's getting better, but it's still not there. Just like the 70s with uh, mixed uh, cultural marriages. Would you believe there's 167,000 mixed marriages now because they did such a good job of aborting children. 4,000 a day. Every day, 4,000 are aborted. Now, I'm not supposed to mention that. People say, oh, that's a touchy touch subject. But I, it upsets me. I believe a woman has the right to, to do whatever with her body. However, this is what Korea has done. And they are doing it even now, today. But 21 babies are born every day to an unwed mother. Seven of those women are trying to keep their babies. So things have changed so much, even in 10 years, uh, 19, uh, 2001, the figures are that only 5% were keeping their children. So that's how much it's changed, even in 10 years. But what I've tried to do with my blog is to document not only our differences, but like the spectrum of differences in our stories with full-blooded Koreans, the generational decade, each decade, the reasons for giving up for adoption were different. They've changed. And, but the thing that I have found is that when we look at all of our differences, if we can find that common ground, the areas where, you know, we celebrate our, our Korean heritage or whatever, uh, not everybody wants to do go and make a birth search. My, my own sister does not want to have anything to do with going to Korea. So that's where we are. We're, all, we're a plethora of stories. And on my, uh, uh, my own website, Korean War Baby, 
which I thought was really good, Korean War, War Baby. So I put that together. I tried to talk about these issues. Now I would invite you that I'm going to come out very soon with a kind of like a fill in the blanks. And if you would like to uh, fill in the blanks and do your own story. One thing I found four years ago is when I started to write about how I felt about my adoption, I began to really, you know, uh, grow because I had to like start to really deal with those issues. And for some of us, we haven't dealt with it much. Some of you, how many of you have gone back to Korea? Just in case. Okay, not quite a few. For many of us, uh, there are certain levels that we will get into beyond eating kimchi. And, <laughs> but for others, it's the other side of the spectrum. But I found that no matter where you are, as long as you kind of get a balance within your own self, that's what we need to do. We need to find that. So um, I invite you to you know take a look at yourself as you're even after a meeting like this and kind of look at where do you feel about your own heritage and everything else and your own personal faith, your own outlook on life. It will help you to assess that and also for your own children. But uh, I, I feel very honored to be here amongst all of you. Uh, being back for three months in the States has really been fantastic. I haven't been back for about four years and I'm happily divorced. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.